yesterday we saw about the skeleton system of different types of animals and other organisms we saw that certain organisms have got endoskeleton and certain organisms have got exoskeleton and bones give shape and protection and strength for the body of organisms that also we saw so now we saw about the bones and the skeletal system of animals do we have a skeleton yes we have isn't it we know that our body contains many bones here you can see a picture of a boy and you can see an empty picture like how you drew the skeleton of a lizard try to draw the bones inside your body try to draw the bones inside your body so take 5 minutes and draw the bones of your body have you drawn the bones you have isn't it now look at the bones and see whether you have drawn the bones according to the size of your hands legs whether you have drawn bones which co co uh, cover your internal organs okay so just see go through your picture and see whether you have drawn approximately the bones of your hands your legs your inside your head have you drawn okay now we will look into the skeletal system of our human beings our skeleton now i don't have a model of a skeleton here but we have this picture here now look at this skeleton okay here you can see the skeleton of a human being look at the skeleton take part by part first we will go to the head of the human being look at the skeleton of the human being there is no need to get worried or uh, afraid we all have these bones inside our body now look at the head of the skeleton what is that called it is called the skull it is called the skull coming down you can see a rib case what is it many bones are there lines are there that is called as the rib case so the second one with lots of small small bones right round shaped bones that is called as the rib case now look at the bones of the hand the bones of the hand is here the fingers are there the palm and the fingers are there can you see these are the bones of the hand after that you can also see the bones of the leg okay long bones the feet bones of the feet you can see after that look at this long bone behind the back of the skeletal system you can see an s shaped long bone that is called as the vertebral column from the neck of the person till down till the tip that portion you have a long bone long bone means it is small small bones attached together it's in the uh, somewhat in the s shape that is called as the vertebral column so these are the main bones of our body now what does the skull you can see a table given in your textbook what does the skull do what is the characteristic of the skull look at the shape of the skull the head why is the shape of that what is the shape of that it is round some uh, top it is round then our whole chin and the teeth and everything comes inside that skull isn't it why is the shape of the skull like that and what is the use of the skull what is there inside our head 
Yes, we have the brain inside our head, isn't it? So, what is the use of the skull? The skull helps to protect the brain which is inside because we know our whole body is controlled by the brain and the nervous system. The brain is the most important part of our body. So, that is protected by the skull. Not only that, down when you come, you can have a chin. You have a chin here, the tongue and all these things are there, the teeth. So, teeth, teeth and the chin, all this is part of the skull. And we have only one movable bone in the skull. Which is that movable bone in the skull? Only the down, the lower chin, the lower jaw bone. This bone is called as the jaw bone. Jaw is which one? Inside our mouth, this is called the jaw. So, the only movable bone inside the skull is which one? The lower jaw bone. So, we can move only this bone in the skull. All these things are not movable. Okay. Only this bone. When you talk, you can see this part will not move. This is the chin. This part is the one which is moving when we are talking. So, we know why it is, why only it is, this is the movable. Because if it is not moving, we will not be able to talk. Now go to the next one, the rib case. <clears throat> Here when you see the rib case, you can see round shaped, small small bones right round, isn't it? Why is it round shaped like this? Yes, that is because all our internal organs, which are the internal organs which you have inside the body here? The heart is there, the lungs are there, the liver is there, stomach is there, intestines are there. Hmm? And all the ball gladder, pancreas, all of the things, organs are inside this part. Isn't it? So, the rib case protects these internal organs. Okay. The rib uh, case, rib cover, protect the lungs and mainly the heart. Okay. So, all this is protected up till here. We know the abdomen region. Up till here, we have, if you touch and see, you can see your Feel your ribcage down. So touch and see. So we can see that the lungs and the heart is inside the ribcage. So the ribcage protects the lungs and the heart. Then come down to the vertebral column. We know the vertebral column is the bone which starts from the neck up till down. Why is the vertebral column like that? This vertebral column, what is the characteristics? It is somewhat S in shape, isn't it? Hmm? And there are many small, small, small bones attached to that. So, this vertebral column helps us to stand straight. Keeps the body erect. It is given in your textbook. What is the meaning of keeps the body erect? It helps us to stand straight. Okay. If something happens to our vertebral column, we will not be able to stand straight. That we have learnt in the health education classes. How deformities are formed? It is because of the deformity of the vertebral column. If anything happens there, our whole body will be affected. Come next down to the bones in the hand. So, the bones in the hand we can see. We have one long bone here and inside the here we have two small bones. Then we have small small bones and the bones of the fingers. So, what is the use of those bones? It helps our, our hands to be strong and do different types of activities. These bones helps the hand to hold like this, to turn like this. All this it is because we are doing, we are doing work with the hands because of the bones. Okay. Next one, the bone in the leg. Now we have again like the hand arm bone, we have another long bone in the thigh. That bone is the largest bone in the human body. Which is the largest bone? The thigh bone in the body is the largest bone of a body. Okay. And the ear we have. Isn't it? This here, ear. Uh, this, this is also a bone. But we can twist and turn like this. Isn't it? So, this is a very soft bone. It is made up of a substance called as cartilage. Okay. This is made up of cartilage and fish, fishes and all we can see. It is a soft bone. This is a bone but very soft bone. So, we, I, in a grown up person, the ear bone only is the one we, uh, we made of, of cartilage which is soft. But in babies, many cartilages, many bones uh, become cartilage. Then they become stronger. Okay. 
Now the inside the ear there are three bones inside the ear. Okay. In that the stapes which is inside the ear is the smallest bone in the human body. The stapes in the ear it is the smallest bone in the human body. That you will learn when you go to the 7th standard about the ear and the internal parts of the ear. Okay. So now we have to learn only few things. So now we saw which are the different types of bones in our skeletal system. The skull, the rib, the vertebral column, the bones of the hand, the bones of the leg and inside the ear we have a very small bone. Okay. So this is what you have to learn. Now uh, draw the table in your notebook and write down the characteristics and write down the uses of each bone. Uh, in that uh, passage in the uh, box they have given you in detail which teacher has explained now. So look into that and complete this table. Now you have seen isn't it uh, motorbikers uh, using a helmet. Why do they use a helmet? A paper report is already given there. The passenger fell on the road. The head was not injured as he was wearing a helmet. So why, why are the police insisting us to wear a helmet? Because if we fall down and hit our head on the road or something happens, it damages the brain and we can die. So we must always wear a helmet to, to protect our skull. So I hope you have understood the different bones of our body. So read the text and do this activity. Thank you children.